Welcome to Bounty's Bootcamp, where we're going to tell you everything you need to know to make yourself stand out as a bounty hunter. One of the key things that people need to remember about bounties is that it's not just about your application. It's the whole picture you paint about yourself. And bounties are becoming more and more professional as we get bigger and bigger value bounties in. You need to sell yourself in a marketplace that values professionalism. Step one is to make sure that your Replit profile is as good as it can be. Go to your Replit profile, import your top projects and publish them so they're visible. Give them good names, cover pages and content because if I am posting a bounty and looking for the best person for it, I will immediately check their profile and look at the quality of the work that they're advertising to the world. Now, if you've not got a massive profile, that's fine. Things like 100 Days of Code were designed with projects that you could build to bulk out your portfolio. And there are lots of opportunities to do that on Replit. You may also want to go in and hide any published projects that have random names or that you're experimenting with code and are unfinished. To do this, you will need private REPLs, which means you'll either need a hacker plan or you need to pay for that with cycles. With your list of projects properly curated, the next job is to add in professional links. You want to go to your Replit profile and make sure you add in your GitHub account. Linking to your GitHub account shows that you have a commit history and that you contribute or work on other projects. You'll also want to add in your LinkedIn, which is a professional presence. And if you are just starting out your career and haven't built that yet, go and build a LinkedIn profile. They are important for that level of professionalism when you're trying to develop large pieces of software. Finally, add in your Twitter or other social media that are appropriate for your profile. If you've got an account that is all about you trolling other people, probably best not to link that. If you've got a social media presence where you talk about development or you're easy to contact so people can get an idea of what you're like as a person, link that as well. Now, nobody wants to appoint a bounty hunter that's got the default Replit robot as their profile picture. Similarly, an anime girl or a bit of random image you found off the internet is unlikely to show off your professional presence. A real headshot is preferred here, but we understand that not everyone's in a position to do that. But the image should be professional and illustrative of who you are as a developer. Here are some examples of some really strong profiles. We've got a selection here with AI generated profile pictures with a small selection of published projects and others, but you can see that they all have a professional look and they all appeal to a bounty poster by being that much more professional. Take a look at the examples and take some time now to go and update your profile. Make it as professional as you possibly can and take your time because nothing makes me reject a bounty quicker than seeing that somebody hasn't put any effort into setting up their profile. I've even rejected somebody who claimed to be a computer science teacher at one point because their profile was empty. With your profile in hand, how do we write that application? Because the moment you apply for a bounty, you're putting yourself out there. And unfortunately, given the amount of people that are interested in applying for bounties, and especially bounties of high values, it's not good enough to say something like, yo, what's up? It's me, your boy, David. I'll solve this for you, no fear. These are people willing to pay big sums of money to have you solve programming problems for them. So what they need is a bit of reassurance that you know what you're talking about. Let's start by creating a proper intro because this is the first time they read anything from you. So let's start with a hello. Keep it simple, don't give us too much. Say hello to the bounty poster. Call them by name to give that personal touch. Then it's worth adding some context on your bounty and why you're interested in applying for this bounty in the first place. Now, of course, we don't want your entire life story. I don't want to read a 300 page novel about everything you've ever encountered in your life. But what I am interested in is relevant experience to the bounty they've currently posted. Do you have experience in the programming language that they're talking about? Have you previously worked and trained AI models before? We're looking for comments that are relevant and are to do with the language or the tech stack that they've asked you to use. Things like I have previous experience are good, but make sure you link to a project or explain it if you can't link to it for IP reasons. I have 20 years of experience in software development is a brilliant claim, 
but link to your CV, link to your LinkedIn profile. Make sure you show them evidence of this. I once had a bounty application from somebody claiming they had 15 years experience, but they were only 15 years old. And whilst that might be technically true, it's not the sort of thing we're looking for in terms of expressing why you'd be good for a bounty. Absolute bonus points for adding links to repos that are similar in projects or that show your skill set. This is particularly important if you're applying for something where you have no previous experience. Showing the quality of your work in different areas is often good to give people the confidence to give you a chance. Previous experience is the strongest metric to get you accepted. So showing off your projects and showing actual examples of what you've done before are the ways to get that bounty. But what if you're applying for a really competitive bounty? What if somebody is throwing a few thousand dollars at this particular problem? Well, in that case, what really makes a difference between you and somebody else applying is having a proof of concept. A simple prototype that shows some of the aspects the person's asked for in the bounty is a great way of getting your foot in the door because they will have confidence that you understand the problem enough to have been able to build the simplistic prototype you've provided us with. This worked when I awarded a bounty recently because they were able to give me a simple proof of concept of the basic idea and then refine it when I awarded them the bounty. Let's take a look at some bounty applications and see if we can work out why they were successful. In these altimeter bounties, we've got some successful candidates. Why is Empty Crown's application good? It includes the demo, and I'm talking to the bounty posters, that's the reason he was chosen. And there's a very thorough explanation as part of that. This gives the bounty poster confidence that the hunter knows exactly what they're talking about. Francisco Ingham here has references to relevant open source projects that they've contributed to, as well as a robust link to LinkedIn and Twitter with proof of their experience. Let's take a look at this bounty, which was a GPT-3 Spanish content generator. Juan Corizzi's application clearly mentions the key features needed and mentions a past internship, which really boosts his profile. The job experience linked in his LinkedIn profile is what got him this bounty because the bounty poster was confident that they had the experience and skill set to take on this challenge. How about this AI image generation bounty? Well, Claudio's was selected as the bounty hunter in this case. And why? Well, you see there's a link to a past project they've done before. There's also a very robust Replit profile that shows me all I need to know about that user. I can even click on these links and see examples of projects they've built and see if it's the sort of thing I'm interested in. So when you're writing your application, keep these key things in mind. You need to introduce yourself, make reference to the bounty itself and show proof of why you should be selected. And the key word there is proof. Sometimes a profile and an application is not enough, especially if the bounty is highly competitive. One of the key ways of being awarded a bounty in this case has proven to be developer content on Twitter. So let's take a look at what we mean and how you can leverage that to be awarded the bounty of your choice. Twitter allows us to present ourselves in the minimal amount of text we want. So what you post needs to have a hook, something to get the user's attention. This could be an eye-catching demo, a video, or a set of screenshots that show off what you want to build. It could have a fantastic opening sequence and just really draw the attention of the bounty poster. Now, if it fits, add two to three tweets explaining cool insights you've got about the project. What makes your take on it different? Now, once again, this is all about proof, isn't it? It's about showing that you understand the brief and that you are able to produce exciting and interesting answers to it and just present it in a slightly different way that will make you stand out amongst the crowd of applications. Let's take a look at one of Zane's Twitter threads here applying for this particular bounty. There's a demo straight away with a video showing exactly what he's gonna do and how he can demo how it's gonna work, following up with a series of the key observations he's found about the solution that he's gonna to have to make. This is really interesting and of course, at mentions the bounty poster. This gives more visibility to your application because when browsing Twitter, 
I would look at this not only because of the shears and the ratio and the likes you might get, but also because it throws it up to that bounty poster in a completely different context. And this gives you more context and gives you more proof that you know what you're talking about. Eric's prototype here for the GPT Times is what won him this bounty. Now it quote tweets the original prompt, which the bounty poster put on Twitter. And the video is a really visual and exciting way to show that all those criteria have been met. Here's a good thread from Jesse Zhang, which whilst not being a bounty application, shows the sort of thing we're looking for here. You'll see the really engaging video about a side project and all the interesting observations he's had in quotes going down the thread. This is a fantastic way of promoting a side project, but more so would be a great way of getting eyes on your application on Twitter. If you need to differentiate yourself in an application, that is the way to do it.